it really gives me great pleasure to introduce somebody that I personally respect, a very good friend, uh, somebody who encapsulates everything that we will be discussing today. Madame Fatma Samora, who is the, as you all know, the Secretary General of FIFA and a long time activist of inclusion and the empowerment of women and girls. Madame Samara spent years working on high level United Nations programs all over the world before becoming the first ever woman to lead FIFA as its Secretary General um, in a position that she still holds. Since her appointment, a number of women have been elevated at FIFA and throughout the organizations that um, uh, FIFA works with in football. Um, women have been lifted to both positions of management, senior leadership positions, and she works passionately to address um, issues of um, diversity, inclusion in football and in sports in general. Um, and I'm really, really excited uh, to have her join me on a fireside chat uh, where she will take and tell us what it takes to get to the top job at FIFA. So welcome, Madame Fatma. You have such a wealth of experience, um, very, very global perspective on inclusion. Um, and, and I think everybody in the audience I can see are moved by your experiences on the ground with countries that were, um, you know, experiencing crises. But what does inclusion mean in real terms for you uh, in the world of football? Well, very simply, it means uh, 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 more presence in, in the boardrooms, around the, the boardroom tables but also in the offices and, and on the pitch. And um, I should also, I uh, would like to tell the audience uh, 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 patients that uh, my appointment should not be considered as an isolated, uh, um, let's say, decision. Uh, since I was appointed uh, six years ago, we have seen that uh, in the, the sporting, in the global sporting world, but especially in football, inclusive, and gender parity has become the norm rather than the exception. I think before Gianni Infantino was elected as a FIFA president, you could hardly see diversity in the corridors and in the offices of FIFA. And as I say at the beginning of my introduction, today we had people from 60 different countries and we have 47% women in FIFA. We have three uh, women uh, sitting at uh, the board of directors uh, against zero uh, before 2016. We have today eight women who are leading member associations around the world. And I think the last one was appointed last week uh, by Norwegian. So we have the British, uh, uh, the, the English Football Association since the 1st of January, having also a woman as a CEO and uh, also among our uh, co committee members, we have 44 women also members of the committee. Before 2016, it was really normal to see that no women were present in some technical bodies, yeah. like in the stakeholders committees or in the judicial bodies. But today, uh, the um, uh, trend helm of FIFA a man who is a father of four girls. So he has a big responsibility on his shoulder because I'm sure every time that Johnny goes back home, we have to tell her, his, da his daughters and his wife, what he did to, to advance the, the, the women agenda. And because he's so committed into yeah. injecting more diversity, but also in himself also walking the talk, he always makes sure that uh, priority is also given to women's football. And the way he showed it is that he wants every single member association, and FIFA has 211 member association, is represented at uh, the uh, decision-making body 
by a woman or at least has a woman uh, within the board members. And to take it even further, uh, under the FIFA reforms of February 2016, each of the six confederations has to appoint one member represented at the FIFA Council. Mm -hmm. So today we have six women representing the six confederations out of the 36 members composing the uh, decision-making body of FIFA being also women. He went even on the pitch now to expand the teams. Uh, for the first time in the history of FIFA in 23, in July and August 2023, 20, so next year, we will see the uh, uh, World Food team expanded from 24 to 32 teams, meaning we'll be having many debutants, like uh, we had experience in France in 2019, and we will be having also Africa, the possibilities through the playoff phases to qualify six teams meaning more possibility of African women also to be uh, competing with the best team in the world. Amazing. When you talk about the pandemic, you know, when, when, when you started, and, um, and uh, this is also a stand that FIFA made by allocating uh, revenues directly uh, dedicated to women football. And uh, I forgot also to mention, it's only in 2016, that uh, for the first time, FIFA had created a division fully dedicated to women football, and that was chaired also by a woman coming from an underrepresented country uh, in the Samoa Islands, so in the Pacific, that will be uh, hosting next year the, the women, a region that will be hosting next year the Women World Cup. Fantastic, uh, uh, Fatma. <clears throat> Absolutely, please. Um... Uh, that's that's great work. I like what you said that uh, the FIFA president dare not go home uh, without showing <laughs> what he is doing for women uh, because he's the only man in his help. <laughs> he's the only man. He's the only uh, one. Uh, man. Yes, <laughs> and it's been shown that um, for male CEOs or any uh, senior positions, when when men have daughters they think more about inclusivity because of their children. They think about diversity I and inclusion. Agree. I, I fully agree. And, and I can see how it impacts your, your, your um, FIFA uh, president. But to wrap it up and uh, maybe a last question to you. Um, I've been so lucky. I've traveled more than 20 African countries because of football seeing all the great work that um, FIFA and CAF are doing on the continent. Um, tell us how football, with its loudspeaker, football has a very loudspeaker, how can you use football to champion inclusion in Africa? Well, let me start by saying that football is, a, is an universal language. And uh, women are composed 50% of the world population, and even some experts are saying 51%. And you cannot uh, promote and develop a game as popular as football by uh, letting 50% of the world population on, on, on the outside, outside the game, outside the sphere of, of, of football. Secondly, women have a purchasing power, uh, precious. Because when it comes to deciding the sporting program that the, the children in the, in the household are watching, the mother has a, has a prominent voice. She's the one deciding whether this program is good enough. When the, when the, when the, the children are also deciding to, to practice sport, most of the time the father is not there. It's the woman and the mother that decide uh, where to take the boys to, to practice sport. And of course, when it's come to, to buying the jersey of uh, uh, the, 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 the players or even to buy a sportswear, uh, the mother is the one that is taking the decision. So it's, 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 it's a critical also for people to understand the, the, the special power that lay within the hand of, of, of women. But when you have also boys and girls playing together, you don't see any gender difference. 
because they have to go by the same rules. And uh, uh, a few weeks ago, well, in fact, 10 days ago, we completed the first uh, uh, school championship in Africa that saw uh, seven uh, teams from Morocco to Senegal to Benin to uh, uh, South Africa, your own country, to DR Congo, and uh, to, um, uh, uh, which one was the last one? And Ethiopia competing for the first championship that is, by the way, an initiative of the African Football Confederation. And, and girls meeting together for the first time in a country did not have any issues about gender. All of them had one idea in mind, it's uh, lifting that most coveted uh, trophy for the first time. So they, 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 they discussed the issue they have in common, fighting uh, gender bias, making also the young boys understood that there is nothing wrong to help their mother and their sister in the domestic course. And there is nothing wrong in seeing a girl wearing her boots and playing football and even sometimes being better. And we've seen it with the American women team. They lifted uh, the Women's World Cup four times, but I haven't heard any of the American men's team lifting the, trophy, the, the FIFA World Cup trophy. <laughs> so uh, it, 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 it also uh, provides a self-esteem. When, when a woman is educated and practice uh, football, she has no problem in confronting uh, uh, boys, even when it is outside the pitch. So for us, uh, using football as an equalizer and as a unifier, but also as a, as a possibility to convey uh, the values of football, of tolerance and the fight against discrimination is really our part that we play to make football a more inclusive, inclusive game because the language is simple, the terms are, are simple, uh, the rules are for applies to everybody. So they say on the same dimension, there is no smaller goalposts or bigger balls. And uh, in doing so, we are also able through the iconic figures of football to convey messages to the community because they, they, they are respected by their community and because also they are looked at as heroes when they are very good in what they're doing. And uh, one day, we, I think we will, our, our mission, just to show how exclusive football is, is to stop talking about men's football and women's football, but just to talk about football. Ladies and gentlemen, that was um, a, a fireside chat with um, Madam Fatma, who always finds time to talk to us. It's, it's really incredible. Anything else you wanted to?